see a packed house. Uh, I'm Jared Hall. I'm executive editor at Entertainment Weekly. Um, I think a lot of you may have listened to our podcast episode with. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for, for that. Um, yeah, I, uh, I I oversee our movies coverage and our awards coverage, so this kind of blends both of my worlds, and I'm so thrilled to be uh, leading this conversation here tonight with these folks. Uh, so let's get right to it, shall we? I got a lot of people to introduce. So uh, up first, executive producer Sarah Schechter. <laughs> out so I can see everyone down there. Thank you all so much for being here. This is a very exciting night. Uh, I, I understand some of you were here at 6 a.m. Wow. They, and you got some good seats, so good for you. Um, the first question I have is, have we settled the debate who's actually taller? Um, well, it's I, me. You know it's me. <laughs> I think that's, Let's see the that's an ambiguous... It's an ambiguous question. Yeah, major lifts on last night. <laughs> I was in class. <laughs> Tonight, the I gave it to him. All right, yeah. all right, yeah. Well, um, as I mentioned, uh, the the award is podcast that I host. Uh, we kicked off the uh, our 2024 uh, Emmy season with these two guys. The biggest numbers ever for a podcast that we've uh, had at Entertainment Weekly. So uh, I don't just extend my thanks to you, but to all of you who listened. I mean, the the impact. Uh, that the fandom has had uh, on, on this movie. I, I'd love to, to start with that. Uh, whoever wants to take it, Matthew, you wanna jump in? Yeah, I, I mean, I think because the book was so wildly popular, we knew that people would pay attention to the film and that people would see the film. We did not anticipate uh, what it became in the world. I mean, you always sort of hope to have an impact and you pray that you won't get for ignored or forgotten, but the, just the overwhelming response to the film uh, it was it was incredibly heartening and 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 it I think it actually took us by surprise just because it was so overwhelming and it continues to be as evidenced by tonight. Yeah. Woo! Uh, Sarah, when you and Greg Berlanti were taking a look at this, did you have like an inkling of an idea that this could be something pretty big? I would love to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew it was a great book. Don't you guys? Agree? Yeah. <laughs> curious in the writing process as you because things that you've made are, are being adapted were you able to take lessons from seeing the the the, um, the making of this film and now apply it to the rest of your work like as you move forward with things yeah we were just talking about this today I think it's made me a better editor of my own work um, because you really learn to be less precious and possessive and protective of like, well, it's always been this way in my head, so it has to be that way, and like, it's gonna stay that way for the, every round of edits after this. Um, it has really made me someone who is much more flexible with how a story can unfold. Um, it doesn't, I, I don't stick to my outlines anymore, for better or for worse. <laughs> um, and I think that is actually really, really good for me. Yeah. Well, uh, Taylor and Nick, I gotta ask, um, I, we, we see such wonderful characters here on screen, but I, I'm curious from the two of you, how close do each of you feel to the person you play, um, and how do you feel like you either dialed up or dialed down uh, yourself to match these guys' personalities? We were just talking about that. Um, I feel like Alex is a bull in a china shop, <laughs> and on set, you know, it's, we're always just joking around and having a good time. And I feel like then you have to 10x it as soon as the scene starts because I'm not Alex energy ever. <laughs> and he is just bananas. And so I said it was like, take a shot of matcha and start the set. <laughs> and, and whereas with, like, with Nick, we have such a great 
goofy time, and then it's just like, <laughs> you know, he goes. <laughs> there is the physical like yeah. waving of the hand. The, the waving, yeah. yeah. What is, is this? My process? Is that is this what you're referring to? I was, uh, I was just, we we're just very different. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, 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 echoing what Taylor's saying, you know, um, I, I think Henry's, I mean, he's such a feeling person, um, but, but I, I, I do, um, I, I really admire his sort of sense of um, his, his moral code, and, um, um, but, but I think he's more bound to, uh, to sort of duty, um, in, in a very, obviously, very intense way, um, yes. Is he a water sign? I feel like he's, he's a, a Pisces. Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> he's Aries. Woo! Oh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> um, Uma, uh, folks were so excited to see you in this film, and as the president, nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, just... <laughs> like, we need to make that happen for real. Like. In <laughs> Washington on Monday. I'm gonna <laughs> see? go see Biden and the Oval Office. Actually, for real. Oh, oh yes. really? So, you know, so any, it's not going to be like Try to put a little energy around. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I'm going to guess he will have uh, ask you for advice. Uh, see. <laughs> That's quite funny. I hope he doesn't. But <laughs> I, I know what my advice, I guess, would be. You know, courage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I, I love seeing the relationship between uh, the two of you in this so much, um, especially when he kind of tells mom, no, the, the she is a he. Um, uh, but then we get uh, what kind of amounts to the talk. Um, I, between, like, you know, like, do we need to talk about Travada? I hope you're, you know, I mean, the, the fun part is, though, before he says that it's not a she, it's a he, she's like, is it a Republican? <laughs> Like, like, and then, and then when he's like, no, 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 it's something that is this. Like, <laughs> one is worse than the other. Is where she's like, yeah. To all people of, uh, of, of certain political thinking, but from her point of view, she's like, yeah. that would be really scary. <laughs> but I'm curious, like, lots of laughs during that scene, having that kind of conversation. As adults, I mean, as as teenagers, it's awkward to say the least but any less awkward as adults to yeah i know you're fake in the conversation but i don't know i mean i, I when i sort of thought about the scene i also like as a mother myself i just i thought i feel like you know your child in your soul and like whatever the labels are whatever the maybe choices may be or whatever the other truths are like it doesn't make you know them any less love is not a question either but that you know they're the same person just because they maybe feel a way that had, hadn't been defined to you before. You still love them the same, and they are still the same. Person. You say that is a lot of what is so great about the story is that sexuality isn't what defines them; it's who they are at their core. Uh, so, well done. And, and that and that crazy. and that soul is still that soul. Like you know, you're, there's no the the earth doesn't move from that love. Clifton, uh, you have some of those uh, kind of wonderful scenes as well with Taylor getting to, uh, you know, kind of see how he is, is blossoming uh, into, you know, even politics when we see him uh, get out on the road uh, and, and all of that. Um, what, what do you call yourself? Oh, yes, the, the patron saint of gender neutral bathrooms <laughs> in Austin. Yeah. Very progressive, very liberal guy, and we love to see it. Uh, it's, it's so good. Um, but uh, tell me a bit about, like, just the relationship you guys forged on set. Um, we don't know quite a bit. We took apart the characters and the scenes and the things of that nature. I think, um, it was, I think it was a good time. It was fun. It was fun, um, being able to share and impart some, some kind of wisdom from my own experiences. Somebody like, uh, Taylor, who's so, um, committed. Um, that, so that was fun. And then also to play, uh, a Latino character who's a congressman, one, and then two, so, um, open-minded, and empathetic and understanding and loving of his son, which is not the norm. I think that's what the whole um, conflict was going in, the fear. I know coming from a Latino family, how I think, I think every Latino here we could speak for this. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and very traditional, you know, old world thinking, so it's kind of hard to um, get through those things, I would imagine. So 
it was um, special. And, and, and also knowing that the films had the impact that, he, that it's had is really uh, heartwarming. You know what I mean? You, you always want to do work that matters. When it matters on this kind of a level, it's like, but that's why you do these things. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, Tommy. Uh, I, I know Taylor Hi. said that, hello, uh, that, um, you know, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I, Taylor mentioned that, you know, Alex is a bit of a, a bull in a china shop, but Zara... Agrees. Uh, <laughs> more like a Tasmanian devil, perhaps. That, the, the hotel room scene when she busts in, I, the entire sequence from the, like, where you're moving the decor, I mean, was that all, by the way, was that choreographed like on the day that you figured out like the going back and forth between the rooms? Can you guys kind of break down that moment? Yeah, that was choreographed on the day, right? I think I had just flown in. Like, I was jet lagged. I didn't even know where I was. <laughs> and, and Matthew's like, action. I'm like, where is she? You, use uh, that to your advantage. Yeah. What happened? You use that to your advantage. Uh, yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. The thing was, it was a tiny room. We were shooting in this tiny space, and, and um, Stephen Goldblatt, our legendary cinematographer, uh, had, I walk in, and there is a track at a dolly laid out. And I'm like, Stephen, what are you doing with this track at all? He's like, no, trust me, it'll, it'll, it'll save us time in the long run. And, and we, we figured it out, and, and then and then Shani comes on set, and we... Sh I'm like, this is all wrong. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> I, and then she goes, my instinct is to do this, that, and the other, and, and so, and Stephen looks, and he goes, oh, I take the track up. And, <laughs> so, it, yeah, you can... But that was a great scene. You know, Zara, when Matthew approached me about Zara, one of the, I, I had not read the book at this time, I wasn't familiar with it, and then we really talked about our love of screwball comedies from the 30s and Howard Hawks movies. And I grew up watching those, so that was a huge attraction for me to be a part of something. And then the script, you know, it's like, obviously, I am not a gay man, but I really, I, I saw myself in both of them. And um, I just really resonated with the message and the story, and it was just so beautiful. When we got to that scene, it was funny because, remember, Matthew, I was telling you, I was like, I don't want her to come across as anti the fellows. Like I was like, I, I was, I really had, I was, I was nervous because I wanted to make sure she didn't come across like an antagonist to, to the two, to the two guys. And that scene was so important because it also helped me nail Zara in a sense that it's her love of the job. It's her love of the job. It is her undying passion for the president, for the administration. You know, she believes this is her purpose and nothing will get in her way. So it was that scene that I kind of held as an anchor for everything else, right? Um, yeah, and it turned, and then we discussed her her meltdown moment when she first sees the two fellows, and it's like it's like a computer having a like mal what is it malfunction glitching whatever that it, and so what does a computer look like when it's glitching? And that's where those kind of like, <laughs> like that thing came from. Um, but yeah, it turned out to be a really great scene, and it, it, it worked, I guess. Yeah. I love it just how in the middle of it, then you guys start like talking about who you have told in your life. And, like, back to me. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, back to the campaign, back to the administration, yeah. like, you know. Yeah, yeah it's all Nicholas, business. How long were you like in the, in the, the closet there? <laughs> the cupboard, I don't know what else I was trying to avoid the word closet, but yeah, that, the wardrobe. I, yes, the wardrobe, as we say. Um, God, I don't remember. I do remember doing some, um, I got bored at one point. I started doing some found footage stuff on my phone, uh, kind of a la Cloverfield. Yeah. Uh, so there's some, there's some footage out there, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's so, it was really fun actually um, hearing uh, their performances and not being able to see it. I mean, it really gives you a very different perspective of um, you know, very heightened performances here. Um, but no, it was, yeah. Um, I, I, I suspect you guys might know this. You do a lot of kissing in this film. Um, so I, I'm curious, uh, like, how did you manage the uh, distribution of chapstick and mint? <laughs> Oh, we had a Smint's Lord. Oh! Yeah, so there's a brand of mints in the UK called Smint's. Uh -huh. I don't know. They might be you. Yeah, they might be you. Yeah, they might be you. Yeah, Let's talk about Smint's. Every time we were about to start the set, we would, we would use a high voice. 
<laughs> oh, Robbie, I'll do it. We go, Robbie! <laughs> <laughs> and we say, Smith Lord. Well, Smith Lord was the most polite it was. of all the times we call him. But we have a lot of affection for Robbie. And I've worked with him twice now, so I, he's, he's really a fantastic intimacy coordinator. But Smiths are the key. There you go. He had a and then he would run out and we'd be so offended. <laughs> like, this is a bad mix. Like, I don't have the Listerine. We're like, I want the cement. Yeah. Listerine strips are strong, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second because you avoided the question when I asked on the podcast. Um, well, actually, no, you avoided it on the red carpet, but you still would say on the podcast when someone asked you who's a better kisser, Nick or Joey King. I'm, I'm not yet. Joey, by the way, was very upset that you didn't answer. Did you hear about that? I think I said they could both get it. <laughs> I think right, but she wanted a clear cut <laughs> answer. She's so competitive. She's so competitive. <laughs> but my question now to Nick is who's the better kisser, Taylor or Tony Curran? Oh. Well, t I mean, t Tony has a very thick beard, which uh, <laughs> I was not used to at all. And, uh, but then you had the stubble, which was chaffage. Um, I could grow one. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be similarly impartial uh, to the both of them. Still not an answer. Uh, Rachel. Uh, as the, uh, Woo! 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 we can all only hope to have a Nora in our lives, uh, the, the friend, the confidant. Um, I, I'm curious what you loved most about getting to bring her to life and, uh, what you loved most about spending most of your time with this guy. Oh, well, that'll be a short answer. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I think, um, you know, when I first read the book, uh, Nora's got all of these beautiful little intricacies and these little, um, you know, these quirks and, you know, she folds origami at random events and she's um, just this fun, effervescent person and I think um, she's so uh, herself, she's so committed to other people getting to be themselves, I think, as well. And I think that's that was really fun to sort of, um, to bring to life and also to work with Taylor, uh, you know, to help to help Alex, you know, bring himself to life. I think she's really good at, you know, allowing people space to just be who they are and not make a big deal out of it, you know? I think the the coming out scene, or, you know, our, our scene in the office was kind of representative of that. I think she, she wanted to allow him the space to do that, but also know that, yeah, this is like, cool. Uh, are we still doing this? Great. Um, uh, so I, I really enjoyed getting to be that for um, this film and that for, that for Alex, yeah. And uh, Nick, I mean, Henry kind of has that in his own life with, uh, with Beatrice, uh, that great on-screen relationship with her sister. Can you tell me just a bit about working with her? Because you have a bit of a history, right? With Ellie. With Ellie yeah, Ellie, Ellie is an old friend of mine. Actually, when I kind of first came into the industry, and we had the same agent in the UK, and um, yeah, we, we were trying to find something to work on together. and. Um, uh, I was so pleased that she ended up being my sister. Um, we looked nothing alike, but da <laughs> <laughs> movie magic. Um, no, she's she's so wonderful, and I, I think you know um, Henry obviously feels this kind of a, a, a claustrophobic force, uh, you know, um, from his family and, and the centuries of um, of, of tradition and. Um, you know, B, B is not like that at all, and, and, and she's, in many ways, his, his only kind of confidant, and um, I mean, she's just such a wonderful actress, so I, I really cherish all of our scenes together. Um, Matthew, as you uh, were working on uh, adapting Casey's book, was there one scene in particular that you were just like, I, it, like it was posing just more challenges in terms of adapting it for screen versus, you know, uh, that's the way things read as a book can be very different. Yeah, I think that, I mean, honestly, the biggest challenge was this this wealth of, of, of wonderful scenes in the book that I knew ultimately wouldn't make it into the film. And and for me, uh, it, it really was, I, I, I sort of felt like uh, I had to let go of this expectation that, that the whole thing would get in, right? Of course it won't. And I just set for myself this very simple goal of if it does not serve 
Henry and Alex's story, it doesn't be belong in the film. There's no place for it in the film. Um, I think the biggest sort of, I, I'd call quasi-controversy, was um, uh, you know the decision not to have June in the film because June is a, a beloved character in the novel. Did you hear that like whisper that went through yeah. the Yeah. <laughs> I, I stand by my decision. Um, <laughs> But I, you know, I started working on the film, I started working on the script, and I, I, I just saw, like, uh, June has a little bit to do, and then Nora just has a little bit to do, and I, I called uh, my, uh, the, our producer, not our exec producer, but our producer, Sarah Schechter, and, and, I, and, and then eventually we both spoke to Casey, and I just said, look, I've got, I can either give two small parts to two young actors, or I can give one good part to one young actor. And I think, obviously, given what we know of Rachel's performance, I, I feel very confident I made the right decision. But it was not an easy decision to make. And I think that was like, it was basically, it was like, kill Casey's darlings, you know? And, um, and mine, because it would be my child. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but, uh, but it, it really, um, um, yeah, there was no particular scene in the book that I, 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 I actually, once we decided that it, was, it needed to be in the movie, that I, because Casey's book was so clear, so, so, uh, so filled with detail and so filled with heart, that, I mean, adapt, the trick of adapting it was just like, how spare can you be without losing the, the heart of it? There were a lot of dog-eared copies on set. I think everyone involved and everyone on the stage really has such reverence and love for the book that um, I think everyone felt a real responsibility. So all of you guys liking it means so much to us because we were thinking about you every day when we were making it. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but these two, like the last few months, have been on a lot of red carpets doing a lot of events. And the thing that they keep getting asked is, are we getting a sequel? And they're like, not up to us. Like, you know, it's not... It's up to these other people. So I'm going to ask the other people who it's actually up to because we got them right here, right? So, so Matthew, is there going to be a sequel? Like, are you working on anything? Yes, there's going to be a sequel to the movie. Care 
and we all, like like Sarah said, we had dog-eared copies of the book on set, and, and we all took it really seriously. We all had fun, and we all um, made sure that there was a lot of joy in the work, but we knew what the book meant to people, and we, we were determined <laughs> not screw it up. <laughs> and so the only thing I can say about a sequel is that it, it's it will be made with the same attention and love um, and, there is and, a book, and dedication. So you can't that book up. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, uh, you guys, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you.